Okay, let's take a look at how to solve this interesting problem here. And uh, it looks like we have some sort of house, right? So we have a house and we have a ladder and we got some dimensions going on. It looks to be that this is 15 foot high here, this portion of the house, and this is five foot dimension here. But we want to know how long this ladder is leaning up against the house with these dimensions. So we're going to uh, talk about how to solve this problem. And if you're watching this video, um, you're you know, obviously interested uh, in this problem. It caught your eye and maybe you're taking algebra or geometry or reviewing mathematics. So what I'm going to be talking about is absolutely a kind of a fundamental math concept. So definitely want to stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how to approach a problem like this. But uh, before we do so, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many, many years, I've constructed many, many online math courses. So if you want to check out my full uh, uh, library of math courses and my math help program, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, uh, beneath this video uh, and in the description as well, you'll find uh, some math notes, my math notes, if you want to pick up a set. So you can check that out. But let's talk about this problem, all right? So we've got a situation uh, here, and we need to know some things, okay? So what do you think? I'm going to ask you real quick. Do you does, you know? Do you have any idea how you might want to solve this problem? Well, hopefully some of you are like, yeah, maybe we could, you know, use some trigonometry and whatnot. Well, you don't have to be that advanced. Uh, you don't have to go that advanced. We don't need, like, the angle here. We don't need to... Do anything crazy although we could technically use some trigonometry to uh, solve this problem but really what we need to do is use this formula right okay a squared plus b squared equals c squared and technically this is known as the Pythagorean theorem I'm not going to try to spell it because I will mess it up so it's but it's called the Pythagorean theorem it's named after Pythagoras, this super genius smart guy, uh, lived uh, a long, 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 long time ago. But he came up with this relationship that you need to know when, it, uh, when we're talking about right triangles. So let's take a look at our problem again. Okay. And by the way, if this, you know, jolts your memory, you're like, oh, now I remember, then I would encourage you to pause the video and see if you can solve the problem, okay? But we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem to solve this problem. Okay, so oftentimes these little word problems, eh, not a word problem, but some sort of, um, you know, where there's some sort of figure going on here, what the problem is really asking you is to distill this uh, figure, this picture, into a more simplified uh, situation and, and that for us is going to be a triangle okay we need to form a triangle so I'm going to simplify this problem down in terms of a triangle so this distance here if this is 15 feet this is 15 feet we're kind of making a lot of assumptions here we're assuming our house isn't like some weird shape like this with the roof <laughs> all messed up if I'm saying this is 15 feet then I'm probably saying this is 15 foot. That's a, a safe assumption, right? So this distance is also 15. If this is 15, we have a home. We expect these uh, distances here or this to be parallel, right? So, so we got a, a triangle. It's 15 feet this way and 5 feet this way. And now another assumption that you can make is that we hope that our house isn't like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, if I said that correctly. It's not like this way. Okay, so in other words, it's going to be perpendicular to the ground. Okay, so uh, with these kind of problems, it, it's okay to make some uh, uh, assumptions to imply this, all right? Especially if you're given a problem like this, even though it's not there. You know, if you tell your teacher, like, well, how do I know that this is exactly? Maybe this house can be messed up. Maybe the roof is all off. Well, no, they're not going to, that's not going to fly. They will t <laughs> mark you wrong. So it's safe to go ahead and just, you know, assume that this is in fact the case. All right. So what we're really talking about here then is a triangle like so. Okay. So this is going to be a right triangle, meaning this is, this is perpendicular here. And I'm kind of obviously just sketching this out. This is 15 feet. This is 5 feet, and I want to know what this value is here. That's our ladder. Right? So this represents the distance of our ladder. This was the height of the house, and this is the base. Now, you know, it doesn't have to be the most perfect, you know, uh, 
proportional sketch, but you know, be pretty neat about it. And this is the scenario, right? So if I can solve for x, if I know this value, then I know the distance of the ladder. So that's how you want to first, you know, interpret what's going on with this particular, um, you know, problem. All right, so I said we're going to be using a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So now let's go ahead and um, understand the Pythagorean theorem. a and b, okay, let's kind of just do it this way. I'm going to erase these amounts. The way the Pythagorean theorem works is this. The sides of a right triangle, by the way, the triangle has to be right. In other words, this is 90 degrees. This is perp uh, perpendicular, okay? Has to, it can't be like this, all right, or it can't be like that. It has to be uh, totally a right angle, 90 degrees there. That's a requirement to use the Pythagorean theorem. But A, okay, and B are the sides, the two shorter sides of a right triangle. This side here, okay, if you just look at it, it looks to be the longest side, and it is the longest side, and that's going to be C, the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse. So this is always C, and then these two sides will be A and B. So it can be A and B this way, or it can be A and B this way. It doesn't make a difference. The problem will come out right. But the longest side always, always, always has to be C when we're using this uh, theorem, okay, this uh, equation here, okay? So... A, a or B doesn't make a difference. This has to be C. The longest side of the right triangle is always C. Okay, so knowing that, let's just, instead of an X, let's just put a C here. And this was 5 and this was 15. So all we have to do is basically just plug and chug into this equation, all right? So <clears throat> we're just going to do some number crunching. So let's go ahead and do it now. So let's call this side A. Okay, so A is equal to 5, and we'll be really specific. B is equal to 15. And now we're just going to evaluate or, or, or put these values into the Pythagorean theorem, <clears throat> and we're going to solve for C, which represents the distance or how long the ladder is. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So it's going to be 5 squared plus uh, B, which is 15 squared is equal to C squared, right? We don't know what C is, all right? So we're looking to solve that. So 5 squared is going to be 25 plus 15 squared is going to be what? All right, and you can get your calculator out here. That's going to be 225, all right? So that's equal to C squared. So 15 times 15 is 225. 5 times 5 is 5 squared, all right? So hopefully you got a basic understanding there. Now I'm going to add these two together, and I get... 250 is equal to C squared, all right? So C squared is equal to 250. So how do I solve for C? Just take the square root of both sides. So on your calculator, C is going to be equal to the square root of 250. And this is going to be an approximation. And uh, on your calculator, you'll, you'll see a you know, very long decimal. But let's just call it 15.81, and there's more here. But... I use this little notice here. I, I use these squiggly marks. I'm saying C's, uh, this is not equal to, this is approximately. In mathematics, this means approximately 15.81. We don't want to say C is equal to 15.81. And it isn't, it's not just a trivial little detail. You want to make sure you use the right uh, mathematical symbols. So there you go. That's how long our ladder is. And um, now you could just feel great about your day that you know how to uh, interpret and apply the Pythagorean theorem and you know something about right triangles and all this kind of good stuff, right? So, you know, um, in math, uh, you know, once you learn one, you know, theorem or one formula, it has many applications, okay? This, again, like I was saying, the Pythagorean theorem is something you'll want to really, really commit to your long-term memory, right? It comes up over and over again in, uh, you know, algebra, geometry, and much more advanced math as well. Okay, it's super important theorem. It's uh, something um, that you want to practice, you know, with various different problems. But, you know, hopefully this was a, you know, um, interesting enough problem to pull you into this video so you can, you know, uh, 
learned a little bit about the Pythagorean theorem, and hopefully it was a bit of a review for you as well. Okay, so uh, with that being said, again, you know where to find um, my full math help. Also, too, I, you know, check out my YouTube channel. Hopefully, you'll become a subscriber. have hundreds of videos that can currently help you out, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. But if you really want my full and best, most complete instruction, you definitely want to check out my full math program. And if you just need a good set of reference notes, you know where to find those as well. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.